Now that your majesty is here, the kingdom, like this world, will once again emerge in its great splendor, expressed Sir Lancelot, masking the bitterness with a smile. If I had paid attention to those words, perhaps I could have. I'll be honest, I don't know what I would have done. I know, it's pathetic. Majesty, it's time to attend to the matters of the kingdom, Merlin called to me, while Sir Lancelot hurried to my side, guiding me to the central hall, to where the throne was, they indicated that this was my place, while they, on the right and the left, would help and advise me in the decisions to be made. Thus began the parade of people who had requested an audience with me, whether to resolve some matter of money, seek help against thieves, or simply to pay their respects. In each of these audiences, I always had the wise counsel of Merlin, and at other times, it was Sir Lancelot who made his presence known when matters concerning protection or law enforcement were required. After a couple of hours, the exhaustion showed on my face, so Merlin suggested it was time to continue my education in the royal forests, always escorted by guards, as well as by Sir Lancelot and Sir Galahad. Merlin spoke to me about nature, and the balance that must prevail within it, life and death. He mentioned various medicinal plants, as well as poisonous ones. He spoke of magical creatures that wander and should not be disturbed, at the risk of suffering serious injuries, or even dying as a victim of their attacks. Are those magical creatures here now, in the forest? I asked, full of curiosity, because to be honest, I have no idea what they look like, nor about the plants he has been mentioning. I truly wish with great fervor to see them with my own eyes. Of course, your majesty, but some of those creatures are shy around humans, some distrust our nature, he explained softly, whispering, leaving through my mind, filling it with the fog that hypnotizes me. You only need to close your eyes and imagine. Follow my words, visualize what they describe and sing. I drifted into his voice, into a state of trance, like being enchanted. Meanwhile, his voice whispered what I desired to see, or what he sought for me to bring forth. What you must recreate, little one. Bring back to this place, you know he's manipulating you, right? I feel like I'm being used in some way, like a mere tool, to bring back into reality what he so vehemently desires. A magical world of dragons flying and dancing in the skies, breathing fire. Unicorns galloping freely through the forests, jumping over obstacles, neighing loudly. Forest fairies, flying among the branches of the trees, emerging from the flowers. River nymphs, swimming joyfully, leaping through the waters. Huge green men, who are the embodiment of the spirits of the forest. While in the trance, I let myself be captivated by it, a spell that deprives all consciousness, all pursuit of truth. With the snap of Merlin's fingers, I come out of the trance, and I can see them. What was in there before, now soars through the skies and their noises can be heard in the forest. They are real. Look at this. 